Hello everyone, it's just a short video to talk you through Kenyan sand dams. Um, Kenyan sand dams is an example we've used in the resource management section of paper two. Specifically, what we wanted to do um, is be an example of a local scheme and either an LIC or an NEE that tries to sustainably increase supplies of water. So with Kenyan sand dams, the first sort of thing we want to think is, well, why are these necessary? So point one with these here is they're helping us to overcome some big challenges with our climate. If we think about Kenya's climate, it's typically hot, dry. However, we do get water in the rainy season. So let's add that in. So if we've got this hot, dry climate, what we want to try and do is conserve that water supply to afford people that sustainable supply all year round. With these ones as well, we might want to say to ourselves, well, actually storing this water all year round is quite tricky. OK, but the solution that these local people have come up with, we might actually argue is incredibly sustainable. And if we think back to what we said the exam board wanted from us, well, they want us to explain exactly why this is a sustainable solution. So what you've got here, what you can see in the photograph then, is this one metre high dam. So in fact, we can add that on here, can't we? So one metre high dam. Now here, the whole purpose of this is, it makes the sand get deposited behind it. So as our river slows down, obviously flowing over the top, well, what's going to happen is that sand's going to get deposited behind it as that speed decreases. So our water then is trapped in between these sand particles and normally the ratio is something like one third of sand to two thirds of water. So if we think about the dry season, linking it back to the climate we just talked about, well this sand protects the water and if that sand is protecting the water then it means it doesn't evaporate as quickly. If we think about our river and that hot dry season, well it's likely to dry up so then what can happen is wells can be dug through the sand then, so in these areas here, to get the water underneath. So you might say, well, actually, that solution that the local people have provided here is incredibly sustainable. And if we sort of think back to, well, why might it be sustainable? First of all, if we look here, we might say, well, we've got local materials. So we're not importing vast amounts of things like cement, for example. So this can be replaced very, very quickly. If we think about who's likely to build this. Well, again, we've got a local workforce. So these dams are maintained by the local people. So therefore, that's going to create us loads of jobs. Again, good for people. And I suppose in terms of future proofing this, the dam can be raised each year. So it's easily adaptable. So therefore, in future years to come, again, people will still have this sustainable supply of water. So if we go through and sort of categorise these, and we think about sustainability, we might say actually, in terms of environmentally sustainable, we might say, well, Local materials here are great. If we think about sort of sustainability for people, well, the local workforce is going to do that and providing the jobs. And if we think about sort of future proofing and in terms of the economy, we might say, well, if it's going to last into the future, it's going to save us splashing out loads of cash. So you might say, to some degree, these Kenyan sand dams help us meet sustainability on three accounts. Remember when we talk about sustainability, we're not just saying, well, it's sustainable for the environment, because as much as things are good for the environment, we also want to be sustainable for the economy, and we also want sustainability for people. Okay, For something to be truly sustainable, we'd say it would need to hit each one of these three accounts up here. So I hope you found this video helpful in giving you a brief recap. And as ever, ask your geography teacher if you've got any questions.